meeting in order. I think it's, you know, before we continue, I think uh, you know, it should be important to say that uh, Keith White is unable to attend tonight due to uh, work commitments with all the uh, storms and damage. He's, uh, he's uh, very busy. And uh, Dan Staffman had um, previously uh, said that he was not going to be able to attend this meeting as, as uh, early as uh, last week. So, uh, everyone know? So, why don't I just go with the first item under Administration and Finance Committee. Um, it is the museum agreement. So you know, back in um, July of last year, we redid the museum agreement with the Historical Society. In, in that, it was uh, really a, a little bit more detailed than what we've had in the past. It really lined out exactly what the Historical Society was going to be responsible for, what the Park District was responsible for. Um, and we've been operating um, really well um, with the Historical Society. And uh, when we were approaching probably October, uh, November of last year, uh, we were in talks with the Historical Society about ways to cut some costs. Um, and they suggested that they close the first 10 weeks of the year, um, which would really work out well for them because with all the snow and salt and all the other stuff that's getting into the, the um, house, they thought it would be a great opportunity for, for them to just kind of shut down and that in, in turn would help us save on payroll costs. Um, well, at the time we had an assistant curator and, uh, and a curator um, we were going to move the curator from over at the education center to the main office here at Prairie View so that she could work on other projects and just, you know, pay her out of a different budget to kind of keep her working. Uh, well, the, the and, and just not have anything for the assistant to do. Well, um, the assistant, she just decided to uh, quit uh, to focus more of her um, opportunity with other uh, with another museum, and the uh, curator decided to leave as well. So we were, you know, first 10 weeks we were going to shut down. We had, uh, not, didn't have two employees, so we had an opportunity to talk to the Historical Society about how we wanted to arrange staff. In the past, what they had done was uh, we advertised for the position, they would help us select someone, we'd hire them that person would go over to the education center and do exhibits and things like that. Uh, and the historical society didn't really have any play in supervision of that employee or uh, kind of being able to direct them to do certain things. So uh, we thought maybe it would be a great opportunity to um, switch the roles, whereas they would hire somebody and we would pay them to um, staff the museum. Well, they um, decided that that would be a, a pretty good idea. They were going to use independent contractors, um, and, and you know, through discussion, we in talking to the our attorney, we decided that that really wasn't a, a good idea because really, the, the way they were going to use these individuals really didn't meet the definition of an independent contractor. So what we're going to do is we're going to hire the individual with their assistance. Um, then we will, you know, move them put the, uh, the individual over at the museum, um, and they would do uh, strict supervision of that person 100%. Now, 
Um, they're also not going to be a museum cu curator. They're going to be sort of like a, a museum uh, attendant, more of a frontline employee who will answer the phones, be there to talk about the exhibits, but not handle or design the exhibits. Because um, I'm not sure if everyone knows that we own the house, uh, but um, all the artifacts within the house is owned by the historical society. So anything that fr comes from the house or that's in the archives are actually the, the historical society. So they're going to design the displays and things like that. Um, we're going to pay for <coughs> those individuals um, up to $12,000 a year, which for us is a huge savings because we were spending about, Marty, 35 thousand a year about for the 30, two? About 30 on the uh, curator and about 12 to 15. Yeah, so 42. Season. Yeah, so 42,000. So we're going we're gonna to drop down. We're going to save $30,000. We're going to be able to do that. They're going to get better control over the individual, monitoring them, doing their, you know, handling their own business and stuff. So this agreement would reflect those changes. Who becomes the curator? Uh, the, they want to call them uh, museum managers. Um, and since there are employees, we can't call them managers because that's actually a, sort of a step up uh, from the rep supervisor. They're really more of a, an attendant. So, so a museum attendant. Our employee? They would be, yeah. It would be our employee, but they would be supervising that, that individual. Yeah. And then this other position, that's not something different. $12,000. No, we're so no. They're going to they're going to have a they're going to use part time employees. They anticipate using two, um, and they know that they're not going to to spend more than twelve thousand dollars a year on payroll costs. On each of them, or <coughs> twelve thousand both. So, yeah, completely. Yeah, and since they're part time employees, we don't have to worry about IMRF. <coughs> Uh, benefits or anything of that nature. Okay. Any other questions? Move it forward. Uh. Okay. Um, next thing. Um, is the adoption of national standards. Um, so the Morgan Park District is, uh, utilizes the Illinois, Associ uh, Illinois Parks and Recreation Association um, for uh, assisting with in a number of different things. Um, when we talk about, we, when we go to the annual conference in January, so there's networking, that, um, they provide guidance on um, a, a variety of different topics, but there is also under the, they fall under the National Recreation Park Association. And the uh, NRPA develops um, standards for community, or for park districts and uh, conservation districts and um, things of that nature. And during our March Aquatic Forum, uh, I had mentioned something relating to uh, standards, and uh, a gentleman in the crowd um, really kind of questioned if, if that was the right sort of standard. Um, and what I'd like to do is adopt um, the National um, Recreation and Park Association as the sort of the official standards of the Morton Road Park District. So this will give us uh, an you know, a set of standards to follow uh, you will let the community know that these are the standards that we follow. Um, really, it, it will provide us uh, consistency, and uh, it really does prevent um, our ability and others to sort of cherry pick what sort of standards they want to use. You know, because you know you can find pretty much any kind of standard to kind of sway one way or the other. Um, but if we are adhere to one set of um, or one one providers of uh, standards, then we should do that. So I had asked um, our legal counsel just to draft up a really quick um, sort of policy statement, and that is attached. 
So what we would do, if adopted, we would put that as part of the general practice manual. That just says that um, as a as a board or an organization, we will um, adhere to the National uh, Recreation and Park Association's standards. Any questions? Moving forward. Okay. Next is the 2017-2022 strategic plan update. So this is actually uh, sort of mid-year point. Uh, we were going to start this at the beginning of the fiscal year. Uh, so this would be like either the first, but we've actually been working on this for a couple of months prior. So it really is sort of a midpoint of the year for this. So uh, the first thing that we um, first slide here is enhancing resident experience at facilities and parks and we've completed all the all the objectives that fall uh, within the feasibility uh, for the feasibility study for the dog park. We've kind of we've wrapped that up and uh, kind of moving on and I will like say m August 12th is our dog the park in the park out here so if people are interested in bringing their dogs to the park uh, we're going to have a little um, party for uh, pet owners. So some of the things that are in prog progress, you know, right now we're identifying and exploring the options for a uh, hard pool. Uh, part of that is coming up with a five-year operational budget. Um, you know, at this point we're sort of operating it um, as long as possible until we get the report back, kind of figure out where, where we are with that. Um, we need to figure out what is the condition of the facility, and that will be part of that report that will be presented to the board on July 19th. Um, we need to acquire uh, indoor space, which we have um, done through the assistance of District uh, 70. We uh, worked with the superintendent over there to uh, develop a, a survey that w was sent out to uh, all the parents so that we can get an idea of what kind of programming, programming that they would like to do over there. Um, and we have included five programs for the fall um, and uh, continue to look for ways to uh, make sure that we have some space. We're looking at other op opportunities as well. So um, this is develop a citizens group for capital projects. Uh, you know, one of the things that this, this kind of really falls into the, the HAR uh, system, excuse me, the HAR, HAR report. Um, and an organizational review of the, the Parks Department, which um, Keith is currently uh, looking into as well. So this is, again, his uh, summer of observation, just making sure, you know, see how we do things, how we can improve upon things, and then looking at things with the organization. Um, and, you know, no. Yeah. So improving communication, marketing, customer friendly processes. Uh, you know, one of the things that I'm really pushing, uh, Joe and he's uh, also pushing on to the rec supervisors that uh, collect and analyze feedback for to improve operations. Uh, we have to continue to survey people to figure out what they like about the programs, just, uh, events, what they dislike so that we can constantly uh, evolve, um, constantly provide them with you know, a, a well uh, organized and um, administered serv uh, service. Are people like, willing to do that? Or are we like, pulling teeth to get some kind of feedback? Some of it is, it, it, it all depends. Um, what we try to do, at least with uh, the superintendent of HR and her uh, surveying to uh, customers about the new processes um, was to incentivize them. Um, so, hey, you know, fill out this and, and be eligible for, uh, you know, a potential, uh, yeah, it's usually like 20% off of your next registration or, you know, something of that nature. Um, last fall when we did the aquatic survey, we asked people uh, to incentivize them by saying, you know, be eligible for, uh, 2017 family pool pass. You know, for us, you know, giving out a, a family 
uh, old mass, it, you know, it doesn't mean as much as the information that we're trying to, to gather. So, you know, for the few dollars that we spend on it, it the information is much more valuable. So, uh, increased effectiveness and efficiencies. We've internalized the, the website. We've streamlined the brochure, pro brochure process. Uh, Joe and Kathy work on uh, reviewing marketing pieces. Um, we've replaced, we'll be replacing the front sign because we approved that last um, last month. Uh, and Kathy's done a really good job of working with the village to get information for our uh, posters and banners in strategic lo locations. She's got them in the little marquees by the, uh, the side of the road. Uh, she's, she's had it at the, at the entrances of Dempster and Waukegan, so she's, she's working really well with the village on that. Uh, strength and community relations, uh, relationships and park district governance. So, you know, we want to improve professional uh, relationships through engagement. So, you know, uh, you know I, I participate, uh, work really closely with uh, the village, the school districts, especially District 70. We have the administrators, uh, village administrators meeting, which you know, I talked to uh, Ralph back in, I guess it was the fall of 2016. And, uh, Mark and Dan really uh, kind of pushed, making sure that we reached out and started something. And I talked to Ralph, and Ralph thought it was a great idea. They went, went with it and uh, you know, started and everything. This, this coming year, I actually uh, will be heading it, so I'm kind of excited for that. Um, you know, whenever um, we talk to the village, uh, anytime that they need assistance, uh, we've, we've offered it up. Uh, you know, we're strengthening uh, board competencies and engagement. Uh, some of this stuff was pre-election, was the first election that uh, I went through, probably like your second or second one, third one, for uh, Claudia, so uh, it was quite an interesting experience. Uh, well, we've had some board members. I know Paul and Keith went to some um, IAPD and the Illinois Association of Park District uh, board member training sessions. I know Keith's really interested in doing um, some more of that, so when you really come available and if you're interested in doing that, please let us know so we can get you registered. Uh, you know, this past couple months, you know, uh, with the state of Illinois and all the legislative things that have been coming through with that, as well as Cook County, we make sure that um, the commissioners know what um, is coming down and what might be potentially, you know, uh, rate, rate hikes, property freezes, um, you know, all different kinds of things. We make sure that we keep you uh, up to date. We did complete the Distinguished Agency accreditation. Um, and we are updating intergovernmental agreements. Um, right now, we've just recently did the Historical Society one. We've done one for more than four days. Um, there are others um, that we have that need to be looked at and uh, re uh, visited. Um, specifically, the one I'm looking for is to share services with the village um, that we need to, to look at right now. We're the next one up. Uh, financial planning and long-term uh, sustainability um, under develop and update financial strategies. Uh, we need to formalize the district's uh, philosophy for the allocation of tax dollars at the um, scope of services um, that will be coming uh, soon. The an uh, annual review and update of long-term financial plans. We do that every every year. Uh, we maintain the fund balance goals um, that, that are set by the park district. We had to do some uh, moving of some money a few months ago um, to help that out. Spent specifically um, about six hundred thousand dollars to the rent fund um, that got moved somewhere else based on another board and we moved it back where it actually um, should be. Um, How often do we do that? What review the the goals? Yeah, okay. um, we do it every budget year. Um, mm -hmm. Long-term goals? Well, I guess just the fund balance goals in general. Well, the fund balance like, goals are a policy we set that we follow up the GFOA, which is uh, 20, roughly 20%, 25%. But, um, and we were dipping down, so 
We made transfers back from, uh, about five, six years ago into the capital from other funds. And as it turned out, we didn't use them for the intended purpose because we had capital wanting to use them. So we moved it back. But I guess, do we, we just look at it yearly, like religiously, or like when we notice funds are well, short? Or normally we would see, I mean, we're, there's, a, there's a flow in the funds because when the tax are coming to be collected where our fund balance looks great, the month before it's getting collected, it doesn't look so good. So in the end, you're looking for the final, the final year end, or you know, just to, to know where you stand. You should be, we should know approximately, even though it'll be go to five percent sometimes, we know that there's a big payoff coming in in the next month that'll put us back where we need to be. Right, and when we're audited every year, that's something that the auditors would, you know, make sure that we that, that address. Um, yeah, um, you know, and then lastly, uh, you know, just conduct training for staff on financial concepts. So continue to do that through um, sort of the budget process. So. Uh, enhance recreational opportunities to meet uh, residents' needs. Uh, leverage metrics and research to optimize program next. You know, that's uh, something that Joe and the rec staff um, continue to do. Um, continue to provide uh, customer-oriented recreational activities. The program evaluations are in there, and really we want to maintain that financial stability and, and program offering. So, um, a lot of this, you know, do we use it with the contractors? Do we use um, employees? You know, we're willing to kind of figure out what's the best um, way to provide that service and any opportunity. If it's a specialized thing that we can't, you know, Taekwondo or variety um, it's really kind of a contractual service, but is there another opportunity? Like, can we hire? Yeah, you know, you know uh, staff that have, or excuse me, individuals that have the knowledge, the knowledge to do like a basketball program, a you know, tots program, or something like that. We can do that, or you know, we, we use like utilize hot shots a lot for some of those programs. But any kind of any opportunity that we can move away from that, we we'll try to do that. So, so any questions? We're moving, moving along, um, we'd like to say that it's, you know a lot of this stuff, some of the stuff that are, that's in here, um, is really tied to um, the budget. You know, we are going to need uh, funds to do um, studies or to hire consultants. Is it you know maybe without a, with, uh, sort of outside our uh, uh, wheelhouse? So. You know, that has some impact and when we don't have uh, the ability to, you know, have those funds, you know, we're going to have to push it off and say, well, you know, we're going to have to work on that low hanging fruit, that stuff that we know that we can do relatively easy with uh, minimal cost. So no lawnmowers use weed whackers to cut grass. Well, yes. Okay. Any questions about the studio plan? All right. Teaching permits. So I have struggled with this every every agency that I have been with. As I drive around, I see, you know, uh, go past tennis courts, and there is usually someone uh, teaching the lesson. You know that they're teaching the lesson. You know, they're not part of our, 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 our program. Uh, you, can, you can see they have bucket baskets and baskets full of uh, uh, tennis balls and you when you go and you approach them and say hey you can't teach a private lesson on the court we have a sp specific po excuse me specific policy in our general use uh, regulations that says that you cannot use park district property to for a, a private uh, uh, business okay well I go up to you and say you can't teach private I'm not I'm not teaching private lesson. I'm just I'm just kind of helping a friend out Okay, you, you don't see the exchange of money. You can't really say that they're teaching a, a private lesson. So, I thought maybe we could institute a teaching permit. So, anybody that, that goes on to a, a, a court, tennis court, basketball court, um, volleyball court for that matter, and um, is teaching a lesson or teaching somebody, uh, you know what? You, you gotta have a you have to have a permit. 
So this gives them an opportunity to legally do what um, they're not supposed to do, and it gives us an opportunity to say, well, I don't care if it's a private lesson or what, you're teaching a lesson, you need to have a teaching program. You mean like if say if they someone broke their leg while doing a lesson? That as long as it's not something within our our courts, you know, let's say they, they stepped on a crack, twisted their ankle, that might be but that would be sort of anybody that comes out and uses it in any way. You know, we have to require that that individual that is teaching the, the lesson to have the proper insurance to, to you know for coverage. So if someone comes out there and says uh, they're, they're teaching a lesson, or excuse me, doing a private lesson, we ask them, that, and they say, no, 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 I'm, 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 not, I'm not doing that. Someone gets hurt, it's still the same kind of lives that we do. When I was reading through it, so. Right. I just want to make sure that. So I did run this by corporate counsel. And they were like, yeah, I mean, you can do it. They, you know, put this out. Kind of gave us an, an opportunity. So you know, you kind of you, as you go around, you look at the courts, and someone that's got you know three tennis balls and they're playing, it's not a big deal. But if someone comes out there with a hundred balls, it's like there's a there's an individual out that comes out to the bar. He's got a pitching machine. Yeah. So it's like you know, I'm like, uh, uh, So you haven't seen that one yet. So yeah, I mean, there's. So what do we? What do we do? You know, we take an opportunity to say, hey, you know, we we have a policy. We need to put some teeth behind the policy. And this is like, okay, yeah, I, you you may or may not be doing a private lesson, but you're teaching on the court. You need to have a permit. No, we plan to market that. <laughs> Get the word out. Yeah, well, I would uh, post on all. Uh, courts that said, you know, new policy, teaching permit, and you know, give them an opportunity to uh, decide if it's worth the, the expense to get the uh, the permit, or is it, you know, Probably best to kind of move to the next one? Because this is what happens. I mean, it, it, wherever you go, you, you start enforcing the rules, and they'll just go to another community that doesn't enforce the rules as, as much as the one that they just learned. So. I mean, is it a is it a is it a problem? No, I mean tennis isn't really. Uh, people still do it, obviously, but around from what I can tell, there's there's only a few times that I've seen people actually playing. But it's not that big of a program for us, right? Because we go to Windy City, T Town, T Town, E Town, sorry, E Town, E Town. So it's not that big of a program. So. I mean, really. Yeah. Sort of to you guys. If you want to do it, you guys want to do it, great. You know, it's like, it's okay too. It's just like if someone does complain, hey, there's someone doing it well. Not much I can do because I have to actually see money exchange hand or someone has to volunteer that, yes, I'm, I'm teaching a private lesson. I think it's a catch 22. I think you're going to upset a lot of people. And I think on the other hand, People are taking advantage, right? Yes. So, and, and not that this matters or anything, but as you know, you just come out here to uh, Prairie View, and you know, there's there's lesson going on. And you look at the cars, and you look at the the window stickers, and very few of them it says Mount Brook. Right. You know, you get up Niles and Edmonton. You know, that's they're just looking at the easy place to go. Just to take advantage of the task. Does Mount View still be in Niles? Not a teaching so, purpose that I'm aware of. I mean, a lot of people just try to enforce it the best they can to move people out of there. So nobody else has has this. No, I uh, no. What are the uh, what's the downside of it? Besides what's well, I mean, it's the downsides. The the downsides is. A little bit of staff time to, to like post it and then go monitoring, you know, monitor those times. But 
that's the downside to not doing it as well. We still have to monitor. You know, the, the thing here is that we, we have specific times that we use park police, and that's usually after 4 o'clock, or excuse me, after 5 o'clock on, on the weekdays, and a lot of these lessons are, are you know, late morning, early afternoon, so you're kind of missing them. Let's say you have a dad that's out there teaching his kid with a bucket full of 50 balls, right? And then you got to walk up to him and be like, you know, are you teaching a lesson? Do you have a permit? You know, it's just, I'm just saying it's, it's it, it could create unnecessary friction, but, you know, I guess is the juice worth the squeeze, right? Is, is, is what? The juice worth the squeeze. So what I say is, is charging somebody, you know, money to pay for a permit worth the friction that we're going to get from the residents by looking like we're trying to achieve Right, no, that's that is something that you you know you're right to bring it up because you're going to say, well, hey, I'm a more of a resident, and if I want to use the tennis courts and I want someone to come out and teach me a lesson, what's that of, of, of yours? That's my business. Yes, that's going to be an issue. Sure, just, you're going to have a no. I'm and you're right. A dad's dad's got a bucket of 50 balls, um, and is teaching his and kid. And he's got a 12, 13 year old kid. You know, and you're like, hey, do you have a permit to teach here? No, great questions, and that's. That's something that, well, I'm sorry, I, I know it's your kid, your child, but you still need to have the permit. We don't have a problem now. Well, there's, there's people that are using the courts that are obviously teaching lessons that we, yeah, I, 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 that we can't preempt. It's the people that take advantage that, that are the problem that spoil it for everybody. It, it, you know, it, it's true. It's true. Yeah. But, you know, so you're yeah, right. I get it. It's like you said, it's going to set the rules. No. Right. No, I'm, as I was just kind of going along last I don't know, a couple of weeks ago and just thinking, well, what can we do about this? Because no matter where you go, you know, uh, it doesn't matter if it's Vernon Hills or Lake Forest or Niles or here, everybody deals with the same thing. You know, you, you, you apply pressure to keep people off that aren't supposed to be on there, they're just going to move up you know, somewhere else, like I said before. But you're right, there ha there's going to be repercussions to this. And you listed out, we talked about two. Right? But it's up to you guys. Is this something we can think about a little more? Sure, you got a week. Uh -huh. No, I'm sorry, if you want to table it for no, a week. I mean, yeah. No, to, to next week, that's all. I just, you know, I'm just trying to think about it. And, and uh, for me, and I'll, I was going to bring this up later, I, uh, somebody came up to me over and was like, why did you close Oreo Pool early? I work. You know, like just grab me on the street and like talk to the board about it. My point is, you know, same thing with the dogs when we let dogs in the park, right? Yeah. So it's like I'm just trying to think, you know, and, and I'm fine. I mean, I got thick skin, I can handle it, but I'm just thinking of adding more, more fuel. I guess that's all. Sure. I mean, that's something that you'll make decisions that are popular, and you'll make decisions no. that are better. So. This is a program that we don't have to decide now. Yeah, I, the way I feel is that we should table it until the next consent okay. call so that our other okay. board members are here. Sounds great. Right. Discussion. Okay. All right. Yeah. Front and center. Right. Uh, but I was going to ask you a couple of because I wasn't here last year. Why, what time did we close the pool last year? Are you talking about time of the day, day of the week? Or season. Um, that's a good question. So I think during during the week. Okay, so um, season. Sort of the the objects. Summer. Yeah. Sometimes uh, one pool closes earlier than the next. Just depends on what the weather. It's like today we probably have just Oreo open. I'm, I'm guessing now. But yeah, I mean Oreo pool. So last year it was open until what time during the week? Provided the weather was good. Do you remember? Nine. Okay, this year course is at seven, right? Seven. Seven. Why did why did we decide to close it two hours earlier? Um, because right now we're doing um lap swim from seven to nine. Um so but that's something that can be tweaked again for next year. So. Next year, yeah. I mean I just I just like I said, she was asking me some questions and I just wanted to make sure. And that's what I thought. She works late. Does she go out there to lap swim or she just go over there to lounge? Um, that's a good question. She's in phenomenal shape, so I don't know. Maybe she laps swim. Okay. Um, but I just wanted, wanted to clarify that. I told her that I thought that that's what it was, but I just wanted to wait until I talked to the rest of Yeah. Okay. OK. 
Okay. Equipment purchase one more. Yes. So, um, the parts department. He, he's not done his evaluation yet. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Can't spend any more money. He wants to. Uh, well, he, he wants to purchase uh, two skag. Skag cheetah cheetah riding the mowers. I want to come so, the grass. I want to see what this thing looks like. <laughs> yeah, right. So, uh, in the capital budget, fifty thousand dollars was set aside for the replacement of a tri deck mower. Um, we evaluated our current one. It's in great shape. There's no need to replace it, but we have a greater need to replace two of the three smaller riding lawn mowers. And this is um, what we're suggesting. Uh, Keith went out, uh, got some verbal quotes from uh, some companies, and uh, actually Russo Power Equipment and Martin Implement Sales came in at the same price, nine thousand seven hundred ninety-one. However, Russo will give us a credit of twenty-five hundred for trading in the old ones. So we would like the board to approve the purchase of two Scad Cheetah sixty-one inch riding lawnmowers from Russo Power Equipment in the amount not to exceed seventeen thousand. One thousand, excuse me, seventeen thousand and eighty-two dollars. What are they going for? Yeah, what are these the ones that, that stand up and you? I'm just curious. Right? They want to know what it looks like. No, yeah. just sit down. Yeah, just, sit down. Uh, just like one of those. Yeah, like this real turn. You sit down. It looks like a like a chair <laughs> on top of a deck in the motors and bag. It's got the two. Just yeah. the name Skag Chambers. I got to see it. So yeah, that's fast. That's and Russo so, has worked with us before and been very good to us too. So glad to uh, continue that relationship. Yeah. So um, that's the agenda now. We are going to uh, take park tours. We're going to do uh, Prairie View, Park, Pioneer, Austin, Mansfield, and Palm Lane uh, tonight. So. Uh, Prairie View, I thought we would just walk around the building really quick, just in case you've never seen um, some of the reaches inside here. I know. Car, uh, we're just going to go to the north end, because we've seen the south end. We went to the, the pool, and we need to do that. We've kind of been in the museum as well. So we'll go to Pioneer, Dinosaur Park, um, Austin, okay. Mansfield, and Palm Lake. Okay? Oh, we all get that. Um, we're going in the, the white van. Should we leave our stuff with you? No, uh, not unless you want to come back in before we're, uh, we leave for the evening. Can so you tell me the I will. Yeah. Yeah. The white van, is it going to pull up? The white van. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to shove you in. Never heard from again. Right? You're late to the parade.